What's going on, everyone? You're listening to 99 Yards here with your host, Bot. And today, we have a familiar face on the show. You want to shout, or you want to do stuff? Yeah, Josh Booty here again, session two. Uh, former NFL quarterback, former Major League Baseball player, former quarterback, LSU Tigers. Uh, just happy to be back on the show and do another program with you, man. Help you out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, as you remember, last time we got into, like, the high school, and we touched on the college, but it was very rushed as – um we we had like a time and we didn't get into much of it so we'll get into that today and then talk about nfl and the major league baseball so yeah so if you're on anchor there's gonna be a 30 second announcement we have to make here but if you're on youtube then we'll be getting right into it so let's start where we picked up or let's pick up where we left off last time so um lsu playing for nick saban what was that like like how was the recruiting process with nick saban and all that going yeah, I was actually at LSU in 99, my first year there, 1999, that dates me. But uh, Jerry DiNardo was our head coach. So when I came back from playing Major League Baseball, I wanted to play college football with my brother, and I went back to LSU. So uh, long story short, Jerry DiNardo was the head coach at the time at LSU. He got fired my first year at LSU, and they hired Nick Saban, a guy named Mark Emmert, who's now the president of the NCAA hired Nick Saban to be our next head coach. So I was at LSU before Saban got there. Saban got there, and I ended up being his first quarterback at LSU. But it was a fun experience for me. He hired uh, offensive coordinator Jimbo Fisher, who's now the head football coach at Texas A&M, yeah, yeah. was my offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. So it was me, Saban, and Jimbo, uh, you know, in the meeting room gearing up for games. And it was fun, a fun experience I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so – Um, Of course, you were the quarterback, like, the head of the team. So, how was that, like, did Nick Saban always, like, talk to you about – and Jimbo Fisher, of course, also a very great coach himself. So, like, how, like, was that? Like, how much time were you spending just, like, like learning the offense and, like, learning Nick Saban because that that must have been a process in itself. (laughs) Tons. uh, No, it's a great question. Tons of time with Jimbo Fisher because uh, him and I would spend almost every afternoon and evening together, either on the practice field, uh, in drills, or watching film and discussing opponents um, and, and different things like that. Saban would come in more at the end of practice, at the end of film sessions, and talk about uh, little things that he felt like we needed to do to win a ball game or, uh, you know, just really instilling quality, detailed-oriented qualities into me and Jimbo. Jimbo was a young coach at the time, and we were trying to figure things out. And at that time, Saban had never won a national championship. So mm-hmm. this is – Pre Nick Saban being, uh, you know the the Nick Saban that he is today. So he was a hustler, and Jimbo was a hustler, and they were both aggressive and detail oriented. And we just we would sit in there and try to figure things out on a weekly basis. And that's what I enjoyed most about uh, about them. And that's what I enjoyed most about the game of football is sitting down and schematically trying to figure out ways to win or defeat your opponent. And it's like a big chess game, man. Football is an amazing game. Yeah. So Nick Saban, of course, like, as we said, but like, he's a great coach. But what was it like whenever y'all lost a game? Because that must have been <laughs> <It wasn't good. laughs> something. <laughs> it wasn't good. And we lost three, three games that year. And it was not good. We lost a, a heartbreaker at home against UAB, which is kind of, I think, what set our team on a different stratosphere. Because you know, you don't lose the UAB at home to LSU. And it was – I threw an interception at the end of the game. We were trying to move the football down uh, at the end of the game to win and to secure a win. And I threw an interception on an audible call where me and the receiver did not connect uh, like I thought we did before the snap. And he didn't understand what I was saying. So it was a communication error. And uh, and we lost that game. And I remember Saban being so upset, so mad. I mean, he he probably – lost some lost some teeth you know I mean he was he was so mad and and you know spitting mad that we lost at home against UAB he thought it was a setback but I think in the long run you know as a team we had to really get down and and did get down into the nitty-gritty and find ways to win after that and and we were able to do that we ran off uh four or five six wins in a row in the SEC and uh, and had a, a great year. So we use that as a, a, a real a jump off place. I think uh, that that loss, and that's the one I remember the most. Mm-hmm. So Nick Saban, he came in from the NFL, and what did he bring over? Like 
that was from the NFL? Like, do you remember anything that he? Oh well, he offense? was you know him and Belichick, him and Belichick had coached together um, with the Cleveland Browns and mm-hmm. and uh, with the New York Giants, and that was before he went to Michigan State and then got hired at LSU. I see your Odell stuff, um, you know, go Tigers. Uh, but I think I think you know just just the way that he worked, you know, the professional. Professional football coaches, NFL coaches work so much harder on game plan than college coaches. College coaches, you got to deal with class schedules. You got to deal with yeah. NCAA rules and regulations. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't watch, you know, practice sessions, film. They, you can't keep the guys. It's hours per week. In the NFL, it's all football, right? It's pro. And I think because he went was at the pros and came back to the college level, he understood how to how to game plan like a pro and how to work like a pro coach. And they work very hard on, on game plan. And that's what Saban, that's why Saban wins. Mm-hmm. So like whenever y'all like, okay, so the, what people see in Nick Saban is like, just like a fired up coach and all that. But what was he like whenever he was trying to like build relationships? Like, was he ever like, what did very people good. didn't see? He's very good. He can, he knows how to handle different, personalities and different situations and different backgrounds and different family backgrounds. And, uh, you know, the quarterback is different from a defensive back and the offensive line guys are different than linebackers. I mean, so you got all these different types of personalities in the locker room. And I think that's what he really did well was, is bring it all together. Right. And, mm-hmm. and figure out a way to manage it all and manage the coaching staff and manage the administrative staff. I mean, there's, you as a football coach in college or the NFL, there's so much more. You got to handle the media. You got to handle uh, the offensive coordinator, the defense coordinator, the special teams coaches, and all the position coaches, and all the players, and the guys that aren't playing, and the injuries, and the media. I mean, it's just it's crazy. So you really have to know your personnel, and he understood his personnel and his coaching personnel and his and their styles. And I think that's why he's such a good coach. Mm-hmm. So. Now, for you, what was, like, your favorite part about that offense? What did you like? Whenever somebody called a play, like, what plays did you like? Jimbo Jimbo liked to throw the ball, but uh, in three wide receiver sets, he liked a lot of two back. I got to, I got to throw in the shotgun a lot, a lot which I liked. The RPO was not uh, something that was uh, a part of our – uh, mm-hmm. a part of our offense back then. This was pre-RPO, so I didn't have that. But uh, it was a lot – he had coached at Florida State, and so it was a lot of – it was a – hold on. It was a lot of, you know, a lot of what he had done at Florida State. He was at Cincinnati, too, before he came, the, the Bearcats at college. And so I got to watch what he liked to do. There was a lot of outs, a lot of hitches and slants and different things where I could get the ball out if I needed to versus blitz. Uh, so there's a fun offense to be in. And last time we said, like, Abram was also there at LSU with you. So how much time did you spend with him, like, working on routes and, like, learning the plays together? So what was that yeah, like? Yeah, as much, as much as I could. I mean, when Saban and Jimbo came in, I was learning an offense, and I was only there for a year with them. So I was learning myself. I couldn't really <laughs> teach the guys because I had to go learn it and then communicate yeah. it to the players. So if I would have had two or three years with them, I think it, the sky would have been the limit. I had one year with them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I did get to throw with Abram a ton and all the receivers, but we were all trying to get on the same page so that we could gear up for to have a decent year and to understand what we were trying to do offensively as a team under Fisher. So I, I didn't have the luxury of really getting down the road where, uh, you know, I did a lot of one-on-one stuff. It was with everybody trying to get ready. So now a little bit of baseball here. So you started like baseball a little bit earlier than football, right? Yeah, out of high school, went to, yeah. went to pro baseball. So how did that work? Like, what made you want to come back and play football? Well, I got injured in 1998 in the big leagues, and then I got sent down to AAA. And they told me the next year in 99 I was going to start uh, opening day in AAA, which was Charlotte, North Carolina, in the International mm-hmm. League. And and I said, I don't want to play in the minor leagues. If I'm going to go to AAA, if you guys got me going to AAA instead of the big leagues, I'm going to go back and play college football. And I made that decision. My brother was at LSU as a wide receiver. We were just talking about him, Abram. And so I wanted to play quarterback as well. I had a dream of playing in Tiger Stadium. And so I just said, you know what, I'm going to take a year off of baseball and go back and see what happens. And that first year we struggled, the coach got fired, and then that's when Saban came in and we were able to turn the thing around. But I really – 
I really didn't know if I'd ever go back to baseball or not. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to go see what I could do in football. And you actually were on the world championship team, right? I was on the world series team in 97. I was a, they brought me up at the end of the year. I got a few at bats and then I got to travel with them for the playoffs. So it was fun. Yeah, what was that game like? Oh, you know, the World Series is best of seven. It went seven games. We beat the Indians in game seven in, in extra innings. And uh, it was just a phenomenon. It was at home in Miami. I mean, it was just uh, something I'll never forget. Probably the yeah. one of the funnest moments of my sports, sports life was being a part of that and being in the locker room with the guys and watching that go down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now back to football. Now to the NFL, right? So NFL – the draft comes along and what was that like whole process? Like Are you trying to like make the transition to the NFL and from college to NFL. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's always eventful because you have the scouting combines. A lot of people have the senior bowl. I was an underclassman. I came out after my junior year. So I left early, you know, a lot of workouts and training and there's no really downtime between your last game, your college year and the, and the end of the season, uh, your rookie, the end, last game of your rookie year, it's almost like a full year of football. You, and and you know, the next year I got some off time because now I'm on a team. I don't have to go get drafted. I don't have to go do all the, all the pre-draft evaluation stuff. And so I think that's like the biggest year in a person, in a football player's life is their last year of college and their first year in the NFL. And there's no time off in between. So it's a grind the entire time. So once you get done with your rookie year, it's like you can take a deep breath because you have an off season for the first time, probably in your life because college is so strenuous too. And you're always doing stuff and going to class and all that. This is the first time you're a full-time pro and you get an off season. So it's pretty cool. So you said you graduated or you went to the NFL in your junior year, right? What do you think about players who will have like a great junior season and then go back to college and then like their draft stock like gets messed up? What do you think about yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. If, if you're going to be a high pick, I'm, I would say if you're going to be a first rounder, you, you should come out because, you know, there's a lot of things that could happen and you, it, the team, it, the team could not play as well. You could have an injury. Uh, you know, you're only as good as the players around you in a lot of cases as a quarterback. I mean, mm -hmm. you might lose a receiver, or your best running back, or your offensive line, or your play caller. So it's very, very, very difficult to continue to have success. If You know, football, you have to have everything go right. And so if you're an elite athlete, man, and you're a first rounder, you got to go to the NFL and play. I'm a firm believer. Now, if you're a fifth or sixth rounder, you know, you need to evaluate that a little bit more and maybe come back and play us and try to improve on your draft stock because there's just not a ton of money at the end of the draft. So now, when I, like you went to the Browns, right? I went to, I got drafted by Seattle and then, oh, yeah. then I got picked up by the Browns, yeah. Yeah. So now you were already in um, Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher's offense, as we said. So how much of that carried over to the NFL? Tons, tons, because – you know, if you if you can play well in the SEC against the competition that we played against Alabama, Auburn, Florida, Georgia, all those teams, Tennessee, all you know, there's so much good football in the SEC that you know if you can carry over a lot of what you learned at the college level, you can play in the in, you know in the NFL or you can you know you can look the part in practice. You can you you feel comfortable. You know. Being in the SEC is a huge advantage because there's just so many great athletes. The speed is there. You know, it's not like when you get to the NFL, the speed jumps way up. It's just people know where they're going and understand the game better, and then they can get to the places faster on the field. So, the you know, the uh, the zones and different things, it just happens so fast in the NFL because mm -hmm. people understand the game and they don't hesitate. So, now what was your, like – first moment that like you finally realized that like it's a different game now it's like I'm finally in the NFL you know well I think it's that first game uh that you you suit up and you're in the NFL jersey and you look over the sideline and there's another NFL team franchise on the sideline in their full gear and you know they're singing the national anthem and there's 80,000 people and there's a flyover you know it's just like wow you know we're in the NFL now I mean Ray Lewis is on the other side. You know what I'm saying at the side. Yeah. So it's like Ed Reed. I mean, you're seeing all these guys mm -hmm. you've watched on TV your whole life or, or you know, 
uh, you know, or were buddies with or played you, against you in college, and now we're all at a different setting. And I think that's when it sinks in. It's like I'm in a different setting now. This is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned Ed Reed, um, Ray Lewis, all those players. What was the toughest team that you had to play against? Oh, those Ravens were unbelievable back in the day, mm -hmm. and they won some Super Bowls. And I think they were the stingiest defense I've ever seen. And uh, they had a really good offense, too. Uh, Jamal Lewis, their tailback, was unbelievable right. back then. And, and like, uh, you know, they just – they were phenomenal on defense. I think they had six or seven uh, pro bowlers on defense. Mm -hmm. And Ray Lewis is the best player I've ever seen. Yeah. So, what was that prep like, the game prep? Oh, dude, it, a lot of film watching. It's a lot <laughs> more than college. In college, you don't watch much film. You might catch mm – -hmm an hour or two a day in the NFL, it's six, seven hours a day, all day, every day. It's like studying for a midterm every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So like how, like, was the practices different than any other game? Like we all working more on like different routes, schemes, plays. No, just getting better at what you're doing. And then, and like I said, you're studying for a midterm. So every team you play presents different problems to present, it's different challenges. Personnel is different. They might their strength of their team might be different. They might be a run based team versus a pass. You know, it might be a balanced offense versus like uh, you know a throwing team. So every week is a different team with different obstacles to overcome. So that's what you practice against. You work on yourselves, and then you practice. You know, your scouting department does such a good job at the NFL level and you practice against those guys. And it's like when we were playing Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts, uh, you know, we were playing against a different team than we were playing the Baltimore Ravens and they ran the football, you know, so it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a different challenge every week. Mm -hmm. So was there any, any, was there any time that you felt like quitting or like they were just getting too much? No, no, man. I loved it. I mean, I think once you get to that level, you're just trying to hang on for as long mm -hmm. as you can and, and you're making money and paychecks. So it's like, it's very hard to say, I'm going to quit. I mean, I just think that's crazy. You only live once and football is the greatest game on earth. I just, I never, that never entered my mind. I mean, it's tough and training camp's tough, but at the same time, it ain't that tough. You know, it's not mm -hmm. like I'm in, I'm in, uh, you know, going to war, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's fun, and I love football, and I love the challenge. I always love the challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's, like, Andrew Lodge, Patrick Willis, like, those guys, they have to, like, they have to make a decision there. And um, some players, like, they'll, they'll keep going. Like, Lorenzo Alexander, he's a linebacker, still 36, and still playing. So. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Yeah, some guys, different strokes for different folks. I mean, maybe they're trying to protect their body. You know, their, their brain, maybe they got concussions they don't want to deal with anymore. Doctors are telling them, man, you do not want to, you know, continue to uh, go along that path. Uh, Troy Aikman, Steve Young's guys that were awesome, awesome players in the league, and they had to quit a little early because of concussions. Mm -hmm. That's why they're trying to protect these quarterbacks a little better now. But it's, it's, a, it's a better game now. It's, 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 the game is so fast, and, uh, you know, you, you really got to – you really got to understand what you're trying to do because these guys are flying around. They're monsters, and it ain't. It is. It's not. A, it's no joke. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this year, the NFL is being like impacted by like COVID and all. So, like, what do you think like about these opt outs? Like, how do you think that's going to affect the game now? Because a lot of oh. players. Have opted out. Yeah, I mean, it's it hurts certain teams. I mean, the Patriots got seven, eight, nine opt outs. I mean. Mm -hmm. It's hard to win like that, you know. I mean, that that's unfortunate for franchises to have some of their star players not playing. It's happening at the college level too, and I hate it because, you know, like I said, you only got a certain amount of years to play this game, and you're lucky to play it. And it seems mm -hmm. like you'd want to play and collect the paycheck because, uh, you know, they're talking about, you know, their family, the COVID, all that, and protecting their family. But I, I just think that if you manage it properly. Uh, you could get through this COVID thing and, and, and it could be okay for most everyone. Now there are some certain cases, but for most everyone, they're healthy athletic, you know, players with, with young families, they, sh they shouldn't be affected by the COVID. Mm -hmm. Hey, I've got a meeting. I'm already late to. <laughs> oh, okay. I've got to go. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. You can, you can um, wrap it up. We'll wrap it up though. We'll wrap it up. Yeah. Um, there was just one more question I wanted to ask you if you wanted to answer that or do you want to continue? Yeah, go ahead. One more. One more. All right. So it's about the Diamondbacks because I know that you won a competition that they got you back to the Diamondbacks, right? What yeah. was that like? Just oh, it was crazy. I got him. Yeah, I got invited to do 
uh, a show on the Major League Baseball Network, a reality competition show called The Next Knuckler. And they brought in a bunch of former NFL quarterbacks to throw uh, to throw the knuckleball and mm-hmm. try to win this competition. And I, I won the competition, and I got a chance to go to spring training. The Diamondbacks saw me in the competition and said, come to camp. And I came to camp. I pitched three or four – three games against the mm-hmm. Giants in camp throwing the knuckleball in the big league spring training, which was unbelievable. And so I was around for, for, you know, a month or so of camp. And then they, they wanted to send me down to triple a same thing or double a actually double a and learn how to throw it. And I was like, man, I do not want to go ride the buses at age 40. (laughs) So I I decided not to do it, but it was a fun experience. And I was in big, you know, big league spring training, you know, 15 years after I'd been in it with the Marlins, with the Diamondbacks. So it was quite a deal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so as I said, you gotta go, and that's about all I have to ask you. Um, it was great to have you on the show again. Awesome, like, man. it was great because this should be a per- thank perfect you, way. Any- yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Perfect- I'm just thanks for thanks for having me, man. I thank love you for it. I, on. Anytime, let's do it again. Uh, yeah. you know, in spring or something for baseball. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, baseball. I think they're becoming back, right? Uh, they started again, right? Yeah, sure. baseball. So, baseball is in the middle of. They're going to hopefully go to the playoffs here soon. I think they've got a few games left. But then in the spring, hopefully everything will be back to normal. Yeah. So hope to see you on the show again if you're interested. And you. sure. um, that's going to do it for this episode. And if y'all guys liked it, you know, share, follow, whatever, and like it. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. That'll help me out. Um, but, yeah, you want to sign us off? No, man, thanks for having me. And, and I hope you have a good rest of the week and uh, enjoy the – the, the college football and the NFL yeah. because the football season goes super fast. And mm-hmm. as you know, man, it will turn around. It'll be Christmas time and there'll, yeah. there'll be only the NFL playoffs yeah. left. So enjoy it while it's here. Yep. Okay. So that's right. what we do for this episode, guys. See ya.